Hey guys, fishing and stuff. Today we're talking about eight things you should keep on your boat to make life easier. Now you should always keep safety devices and most state laws requires that you have things like a life preserver, an air horn or whistle, a paddle, a floating cushion, is that what you call them? But those are not what we're talking about today. What we're talking about today will make life easier and make your time on the water more enjoyable and safer. So let's quit talking about it and let's just do this. So I guess it's like boat hack number one. I'm so the first thing on our list about things that need to be on your boat is a tool pouch. This is a rocker bag. All this is is a tool pouch that you roll up and it won't take much space up on your boat. When you unroll this thing out, it's got all these little pockets and you can actually zip up your tools in them and they won't fall out. Is this necessary? No, it's not. But it keeps all your tools organized and you ain't just got to throw them somewhere in your boat. These zip up pockets are really cool for keeping tools in. And after you filled this thing up, with all the tools that you think you might need, you can just roll it up. And then, when you got all the tools in this thing that you think you're going to need, you can just throw it in your boat. Then when there's an emergency like your motor breaks or something else goes wrong, you got everything covered. I'm just saying. You know, this thing really is cool. You could also use it for like a gun cleaning kit. You could use it for utensils when you go camping. Heck, you could use this thing for all kinds of stuff. Number two. Wheel bearings on your boat trailer are something that you need to keep maintenance, but occasionally they'll go out on you on the side of the road. And if you have a boat long enough, it's going to happen to you. There's no avoiding it. Unless, of course, you're really good at preventive maintenance. Now, something you can do instead of having extra wheel burns with you all the time, which you should, and having a big old tube of grease with you all the time. If you're having a little emergency on the side of the road and you need to change your wheel burns, this could make it easier. The first thing you do is pack your wheel bearing with grease, just like you're gonna put it on your hub. Now, once you get the grease packed good, you wanna stick it inside of a vacuum seal bag and then put it on your vacuum sealer and seal it up. So now, after you've vacuum sealed this, you got your bearings greased up, you've got it vacuum sealed so it can't rust, get dirt on it. Now all you gotta do is throw this in your boat, and in the case that you do have a bearing go out, well, you're ready to change it. And I've got a buddy that also does YouTube, and his channel's called Living With 3M. His channel's about automotive stuff, which this kind of falls into the category of. And he's got a video about how to change a hub on your boat. So if you've never done it, go over there and watch that video and it'll probably help you out. And if you ever have to do it, this right here is really gonna help you out too. The third thing you need on your boat. Now, something else everybody should always have on their boat is some good rope. This rope here is actually anchor rope, but you could use it for all sorts of things. I actually keep rope in my truck at all times because you never know when you're going to need some rope. You could need to tie something down and your straps just may not be enough. But keeping rope in your boat, that's even more important. I mean, you use rope for so many things when you're out on a boat, like tying off your boat to the dock. Use it on your anchors. You can use it for so much stuff, it's important. Instead of having a mess like this that takes up a bunch of room, I started keeping one of these in my boat, and it's really an awesome product. It's basically a 120 foot of very strong rope in a little bitty can and when i say it's very strong it's as strong as paracord this says 1100 pounds but it comes in this cool little can and anytime you need some rope you can just pull out what you need and cut it and the cool thing is you don't even need a knife it's got a built-in cutter already on it you just pull you out a little section you run it through that cutter it cuts it right off for you now one of these cans of rope is like 20 bucks and you go, well that's a little high, but you're actually paying for this can which is made like really tough. But when you do use all your rope, you can buy these little refill packs and they're only $11.99 and you just drop them in, you feed them back up through this little gasket like that right there, put the lid back on 
and you in business again. I just think this right here is a really cool product, especially for fishermen. I'm just saying. This really is some strong stuff. I mean, it ain't no joke. Number four. You know going fishing early in the morning or fishing late at night. You know what would be nice to have? A cup of coffee. And I was looking online and I found this cool Keurig coffee pot made by Makita that you can use a drill battery and make coffee with it. That's freaking awesome. But the only problem is some of us don't use Makita. You could buy the Makita coffee pot and get one battery and use it, but after I did some research on it, the main problem is you only get two cups of coffee out of one full battery charge. So you would need some extra batteries. And since I'm not switching over to Makita, this right here, is one of the next best things. This is a thermos made out of stainless steel and it keeps water hot or keeps water cold for long periods of time. But this is not like the thermoses that most of us are used to. The inside is stainless steel. Supposedly it's vacuum insulated, kind of like a Yeti cup. And according to the description on this thing, it keeps cold beverages cold for 24 hours and hot beverages hot for up to 12 hours. Well, most of us go fishing. We're fishing for about six to eight hours. So I'm gonna put hot water in this thing and we're gonna test it and see if it works. It actually holds more than I thought it would. You could put a whole pot of coffee in this thing easy. And it's weird because the outside of this thing is room temperature. The cap right here is pretty dang hot. So I can tell it's working. I just want to find out if it's going to work for eight whole hours. It's already been almost two hours. So we'll check back in about six hours and see how hot this water is. <music> We're going to check this thing and see if it's still hot. I can put my hand on the outside of it and I don't feel nothing. This lid is still hot. So I know what's inside's hot. We're going to check it with this heat gun. Outside of this container, 74.5 degrees. Now let's check the lid. Oh. 143.6 degrees. Now we're gonna open it up. I don't know if you can see it on camera. Yeah, there's still steam coming out of this thing. Let's check the inside. Hundred and sixty-one point five point eight nine. It's right at 161 degrees. So yeah, I think they're right. It probably does hold heat for 12 hours. The more I take this lid off, the faster it's gonna cool down, I'm sure. So keep your lid on it until you're ready to drink your coffee. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying. The fifth thing you need on your boat. So I did a video about a year ago called 10 Ammo Box Hacks. And it was a cool video because I showed you 10 ways you could use ammo boxes. I went to a gun show last weekend because gun enthusiasts are just like fishing enthusiasts. We're both outdoors and a lot of our stuff kind of cross over. Well, I run across these cool ammo boxes and I bought some. And what this ammo box setup's called is five can ammo crate mini. And I went on Amazon and they actually had them cheaper on Amazon than they were at the gun show. But it comes in this cool tray and all it is is five mini ammo boxes. I mean, these things are kind of small, but they would be really useful in your boat for fishing. And they have a really good waterproof seal. So when you close them up, water won't be getting into them. And I like the way they set in this tray because you could stick this whole thing in a compartment in your boat and you could organize all kinds of fishing gear. I mean, the uses for this thing it's kind of unlimited and I like the way it's made together because I like organization. And you know, this would work whether you're a cat fisherman, a striper fisherman, a crappy fisherman, even a bass fisherman could find a use for this. I'm just saying, but I think it's pretty cool. Number six. The next thing on our list of things you should always keep on your boat 
is a first aid kit. They make all kinds of first aid kits and they come in just about any price you want to pay. This wasn't the cheapest first aid kit I could find, but it is a very cool first aid kit. Plus, you got to like that bag it comes in, I'm just saying. But when we look inside this first aid kit, it has a little bit of everything in it. I mean, this thing's got tweezers in it. It's got a little emergency flashlight. It's even got a pair of scissors in it. Paracord bracelet. Comes with a little pocket knife. It's got cotton balls, gall. Heck, it's even got a couple of glow sticks in here. It's even got an emergency poncho in it. And a thermal blanket. It's got bandages, cotton balls, and more cotton balls. Then we go to the other side. It's got a little emergency fire starter. It comes with a little multi-tool. It's got rubber gloves, a little roll of tape. It's even got safety pins in here. It's even got one of those little things that protect your mouth when you do it mouth to mouth. It's got gauze in it. It's got more gauze in it. Got a bunch of them alcohol pads, sterilized gauze swabs. This bag's got cleaning wipes and it's got Tylenol and aspirins. Here's some more sterilized dressing or gauze and a whole bunch of band-aids. It's even got Q-tips in it. It's crazy all that stuff could fit in that bag, actually. I'm sure there's some cooler first aid kits out there. And if you want a cheaper one, get a cheaper one. If nothing else, throw you a bunch of band-aids in your boat, but keep something just in case of an emergency. Number seven. Now something else every fisherman needs on his boat is a flashlight. This flashlight is made by Olight, and I bought it a couple of years ago, and it's a pretty good light. I mean, it's pretty bright, especially in the dark, and it's kind of small. Some people don't like rechargeable flashlights. I like them, especially on a boat, because I can recharge it on my boat. I kind of get tired of replacing batteries, especially in like some of my stream lights, they take lithium batteries and those get expensive. So I do like the rechargeable part of this flashlight. But the one thing I don't like about this flashlight is the way that you recharge it. You have to use this little base that comes with the flashlight and you stick it into the bottom. And when I first bought this thing, I thought that is cool as I'll get out. And by the way, this is like a $70 flashlight. But I found out real quick, if you leave this little charger at home and this thing goes dead, then you're just out of luck. Because this is the only way that you can charge that flashlight. And that kind of sucks. So I bought me a new stream light. And something I really like about this light is that this light is really bright. Actually, I'm pretty sure it's like a thousand lumens, but this is like a hundred dollar flashlight too. And one of the coolest things about this light, you pull this collar down and it takes a micro USB charger, which is kind of plentiful, but everybody's going to type C now. But I still really like this light and I actually use it around my house a lot. I promise this video ain't sponsored by nobody, but Olight makes another flashlight. And this flashlight takes a type C charger, which everybody's going to. Now, the cool thing about this flashlight is it has a case and while it's in that case, the case will charge the flashlight. So if we take the flashlight out of the case and put it back in, it starts charging the flashlight back. It actually says on the case, that this case will charge this flashlight 3.7 times. But this flashlight is tiny and it doesn't last very long. But the thing's pretty bright actually. Honestly, these hyper lights really are cool. I've had this flashlight a while. I had it on the zombie apocalypse survival fishing bag video I did. But after that video, I stuck this in my truck in the glove compartment. This flashlight is pretty bright. Just the fact that you can set it out in the sun and charge it is really cool. The hybrid light headlamp is my favorite though. Something else that's cool, you can charge this flashlight with a wall outlet with this bottom port, but the top port, you can use this flashlight to charge other things like your cell phone. You can even use this light to charge this flashlight. I'm just saying. I went and made sure in the 20% discount 
on these hybrid lights that I had on the zombie apocalypse bag, it's still good. So I'll put the code in the description of this video. And if you're interested in getting you a hybrid light, you can get 20% off of it. Number eight. I like to keep a lighter or a pack of lighters in my boat just in case I'm ever in a situation where I would need it. And a pack of these big lighters don't really cost much. But this right here is something that I ordered and it's pretty dang cool. What this is, is an electric lighter. You open this thing up and as you can see, it actually is an electric lighter. And it shoots a little electronic flame and it actually works. Here, I'll show you. See what I'm saying? This thing's pretty dang cool. And you might be asking yourself, why an electric lighter? Well, a regular old lighter's gonna run out of fuel eventually, and if you forget to replace it, you ain't gonna have it. Well, an electric lighter has a micro USB on the bottom, and you can plug this thing up and recharge it. And most boats nowadays has a way to charge stuff. But I'm gonna switch over from these to this on my boat. And this will fit in real nice with my little first aid kit. So there you have it. Eight things, eight, that will make your life easier out on the water in your boat. And make things a little safer too. So you should probably get all these things and put them on your boat cause they're cool. And if your boat ain't big enough to hold all that stuff, then go check out this video because this video will show you how to make your boat feel bigger and then you can fit all of it on your boat i'm serious go check it out because this video is over